Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. God designed us to live by laws and principles, not just miracles. And let me tell you something. Most of what believers have, ex have experienced that they call a harvest, you know, a hit and run prosperity, is not God's will. Listen, listen. Have you watched somebody learn how to drive? What do you, you teach him the principles. And then a, a time comes, the person will be gisting and be driving. In fact, for those of you that drive very well, will understand that a time will come you are driving and your mind is not even there. You just find out that you have parked the car. What happened, you really cannot remember. The Bible says, if a man desires mastery, it says, yet that man is not crowned until he strives lawfully. Hallelujah. So every kingdom is made up of systems. And in the kingdom of God, we have systems. And one of them is God's economic system. Hallelujah. God designed us and packaged an economic system to govern our activities here on earth. Now, as a result of the fall and many things that happened to man, we lost the knowledge and the revelation of God's economic system and began every kind of vain pursuit. One definition of foolishness is to try to create a new way other than the way that the original designer made. Hallelujah. When you have a problem with a Peugeot car, you go and meet the Peugeot company because they manufacture that car and they know how best to fix whatever problem. Hallelujah. But now a lot of believers have not had knowledge on the truth and, and, and have not been able to experience the fullness of God's wealth. Principally because of two reasons. Number one, uh, from the discussion yesterday, they've been taught that wealth is satanic, is demonic, and it comes from the pit of hell. Or they have tried and tried and tried and tried, and that's where many believers uh, fall into that category tried and tried and tried did everything that can bring money and since they didn't get it just they just forget anybody you see with money is a liar because i've tried i've tried i tried my legitimate way anybody nobody can make clean money no no not in nigeria just forget hallelujah and our parents have joined in the trial and tried and tried and tried and they say look you better don't follow their ways <laughs> hallelujah we have the world system. The world cosmos is made up of systems. And the world has its own way. The world has its economic system. Do you understand? If you are in Nigeria, many of you who um, are conversant with the dealings among the rich in Nigeria would understand that every um, really rich man in this country who is not born again belongs to some kind of club and association. Am I correct? Why? Because Satan designed a system. And uh, the condition for you to partake of certain levels of wealth is that you subscribe to the terms that bind that system. 
Make no mistakes about it. There is a level of wealth and prosperity that if you are rising, that's humanly speaking, carnally, you get to a point where you come in contact with those they call the gods of the land. And I'll tell you now, from this point hereafter, there are rules and laws that govern the next level. So Satan designed that system. I told you yesterday that about the first 100 world's richest people, if I'm not mistaken, almost all of them are members of Freemason. They are Illuminatics. So they have a system. Hallelujah. What you call recession, it's not just recession. Recession is simply a pre-planned, well-executed activity of wicked people. Let me tell you something. This whole world is a big stage. Everything you see happening in this world, aside from Israel, is drama. Well acted, well executed drama. 9-11, drama. Osama bin Laden, drama. Every kind of nonsense that they parade in the TV, believe me, is drama. The rich sit down and play humanity like a chess. And the remnant of their excesses is what we receive as recession. But it's going to change. That's why we are coming. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. That's why the devil is afraid. Because he suspects that there is going to come an omega generation that will arise and we are that generation say amen, amen. hallelujah alright very quickly I'll talk about um, a few things um, we'll be sharing more on that during the the business exclusive but then we'll just give a little introduction on it the mindset of a what would you call it a kingdom person the mindset with respect to finances listen tonight the Lord is going to be doing a work in our minds hallelujah because we've seen a lot of people embarrass the kingdom they've cried money 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 and they just gave them money and God how many of you have seen those kinds of people just little scholarship, 75,000, and that, that is the end of it. No God, no nothing, simply because they got small. And so we're going to, the first thing that the Lord is going to be doing right now is to give us the mentality of um, a kingdom person. I'll not be giving all the points, we'll just give a few. Number one is, as a kingdom person, you must have the right definition of money. What is money? Until you can define money, you will never get it. It will run away from you for the rest of your life until you can define money. Not from the standpoint of all those godless books that are written from the standpoint of the kingdom. What is money? Hallelujah. I'll be sharing with you my personal revelation. This is what I define money as. Money is defined for me as a tool. A tool, you must write this as a tool. If money becomes anything other than a tool, it will kill you. Money is a tool that enables me while I am on earth to do the following. If you're writing, you could write that. Money is a tool. Write it is a tool. Underline tool. Money is a tool. Money is not a God. Money is not a die hard. No, no, no. Money is a tool. That enables me while I am on earth to, number one, live a very comfortable life. Money is a tool that enables me while I am on earth to, number one, live a comfortable life. John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come, not to give you a religion, that ye may have life and have that life more abundant. And so money is a tool that enables me while I am on earth to number one, live a comfortable life. Where did I learn that from? My father himself. The Bible gives us a description of his throne. And hear me, 
it has not changed the bible never said his throne is made of bronze and metal and made of this the bible begins to give us the splendor and the definition the splendor of his throne and everything and like father like son so money enables me while i am on earth i will not have my children move in rags because i'm preaching the gospel and winning souls nah I will not quarrel and box myself with my wife simply because I'm winning. Listen, I hear people say all kinds of nonsense. They say, how can you be driving a nice car? There are souls perishing. That's why I'm telling them to get born again. If they, look, I am not Jesus. My face is not the one on the crucifix. Now, I am, I am a representative of his government. If they refuse, they will perish. I cannot make my life a liability as a result of somebody's uh, refusal to subscribe to the principles of God that's not my face that's not my face on that crucifix I didn't die for any man's sin I was not on the cross so money enables me while I am on earth hallelujah number two money is a tool that enables me while I am on earth to advance the kingdom of God advance the kingdom of God advance the kingdom of God and that kingdom advancement is divided into two parts number one is so winning number one so winning that means this is the second point now money is a tool that enables me while I'm on earth to the second point advance the kingdom of God and then under it we have so winning and then equipping the body for the work of the ministry so winning so winning very very important hallelujah i told you yesterday that benny Hinn spends about 10 million us dollars every week so that souls will come to the knowledge of jesus if anybody tells you that salvation and soul winning is cheap tell that person he's a liar from the pit of hell it costs thousands thousands and millions of naira to get souls saved but let me tell you there is no amount that can be compared to the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no amount that can be compared to the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why one of the purposes of money, it's important we define money from the kingdom perspective. So in, it enables me while I am on earth to advance the kingdom, win souls, and then equip the body. I said it yesterday, how many books Powerful revelations and books have been written that cannot go far simply because the people are poor and they are broke. Corporately and individually. How many of you sitting right now have received powerful visions? You know that if you can get the financial resources, thousands of souls will be saved through your ideas. You have prayed, you have gotten the go-ahead but you have refused to move. Not because you do not want to move. There is no financial backing. Am I talking to somebody? How many great ministries would have increased and expanded beyond their limitations? How many schools would have been built by kingdom-driven believers? How many hospitals? How many banks? What is wrong? Listen, what is wrong? If one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what if we buy channel O, seven of us? Think about that. What if we just buy it? Children can go and browse. Ham listen, when you listen to those who... Um, browse pornography and all kinds of things those of you who have set lights all kinds of films are shown free of charge you browse pornography free of charge because somebody has paid people satan paid people to say jesus has not written has not risen and he's still paying people till today to say jesus is not alive hallelujah and so it's, it's critical for us to understand so money is a tool that enables me while I am on earth to number one, live a comfortable life. That's why I'm dressed in this suit. I have no apology for it. It's an act of worship. 
unto the king. Hallelujah. Number two, to advance the kingdom, the government of God. The Bible says of the increase of his government and his peace, there shall be no end. Hallelujah. Number three, money is a tool that enables me while I am on earth to reveal the love and the compassion of the Father to the world in a practical way. To reveal the love and the compassion of the Father to the world in a practical way. The only message a hungry man needs will have to be wrapped up in food before he eats. To reveal the love and compassion. We have a lot of believers. Tongue talking believers. They are crying for church expansion. Coming out and lining and playing drums. In their streets. Come to our church. And there are hungry people looking at you. Hallelujah. The Bible says pure religion and undefiled is this. To cater for the widows. And the orphans. Many people who want church expansions. How much have they invested to practically develop their communities? The Bible says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. The church is meant to be a light. Your tongues does not make any meaning to any hungry person. Whether you roll on the floor or fall down, it does not make any meaning to somebody whose child is dying, dying, dying and at that point, he cannot receive any attention. So money, this is what I define money as. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Two, to advance the kingdom of God. Many people stop there. They say, if you are not a Christian, we will not bless you. But do you know that is a lie? Because God's love extends. The Bible says he sends rain to both the godly and the ungodly. You cannot, the Bible says, be good to all men. But then he says, especially to them that be of the household of faith. Be good to all men. Anybody. The church has this ugly bias about Christians and Christianity. It's my thing, it's Christians. No. That's nonsense. The love of Christ is agape. Agape means unconditional. Cutting across race, crossing across tribe, crossing across religion. And until the church is ready to stand up and unconditionally make impact, then we are not ready to take the world for Jesus. Let me tell you something. One of the reasons why the church in Nigeria until now has refused to have a voice is because we do not have the economic empowerment. Turn with me to Ecclesiastes and let me show you something. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome God, how great Thou are. You alone, mighty are Your miracle. Standing on of your holiness, and Lord, we bow and worship you. Let me show you an interesting story Ecclesiastes chapter 9, from verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, from verse 14. There was a little city. And a few men within it. And there came a great king against it. Listen. And beside it. And built great bulwarks against it. 15. Now there was found in that city. A poor wise man. Stop. The Bible says the man was poor. But he was wise. Are you following this story? There's a reason why the Bible described him like that. He said he was a poor but wise man. Read on. Verse 15, now there was found in it a poor wise man, listen, and he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered the same poor man. 16, then said I, wisdom.
wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. Is that in your Bible? That the poor man's wisdom is not heard. The reason why the voice of the church has been silent is because we have not backed our wisdom with the economic empowerment. When the church is still lining at government offices trying to beg for something to put in their pocket, we cannot have a voice. When there are men and women of God that are still governed by the pockets of members, nah. We need men and women who will be empowered enough to call sin, sin. To call righteousness, righteousness. To divide a straight line. Whoever you are, there are only two lines. But the Bible says, the borrower is slave to the lender and the rich will rule over the poor. It's a principle. It didn't say the rich believer. It said the rich will rule over the poor. How many of you have seen your brothers that are very rich? They may not be the firstborn, but every time they call the family meeting, the only thing that the poor pastor does is to start the prayer and end it. Every other discussion does not concern him. They fix the meeting for Tuesday. Everybody in the family is supposed to come by Tuesday. Thursday, he has not come. Your father will say, let's just shift it. It's all right. People can be busy. As soon as he comes, you say, have the meeting. Once they pray, they say, uh, concerning this building of the family house, this and that and that and that. And while they are talking, the pastor man comes to poverty and says, look, the Lord is saying this. The father says, okay, have you finished? He says, okay, let's hear what uh, our brother has to say about this issue. And he says, let's shift this thing till three months. And the father says, case done. The poor will always serve the rich. Always. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's number one. You need to have the right mentality, the right definition of money. Number two, realize that in the kingdom, finances are um, trusted unto you. You must have a stewardship mentality and not an ownership mentality. Many people have an ownership mentality. That's why you hear them say, my money, if I walk like this, will I get my team? You hear our parents talk like that. If I were a giver like you, it's my money, it's my team. That's an ownership mentality. We are stewards. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord and his fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. As a kingdom person, you must understand that the wealth of the kingdom is only committed into your hands for stewardship. Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25. Let's run. There's a lot to cover. Matthew 25. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Matthew 25 verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country. Listen. Who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And he gave unto one five talents. The word talents there means money. He gave unto one five talents. To another two. And to another one. To every man severally according to his ability. And straightway took his journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to verse... Um, Go to verse 18. Uh, verse 19, sorry. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. In other words, after a long time, the Lord, the owner, came to ask for accountability and stewardship from them. And the Bible makes us to understand that it is required of his steward that he be found faithful. We see a lot of people just get little money and all they do is buy all the suits, buy all the shoes, buy everything and buy siren and disturb everybody and make noise in the city. Those kind of people are a liability to the government of heaven. So, having had the right definition of money, the second thing you must understand is that you are God's financial steward. The money he gives you is committed to your hands for the purpose of advancing his kingdom. Not just for your personal benefit alone. Notice the word alone. Hallelujah. 
the reason why many people have failed to access the kingdom of the, the wealth of the kingdom in spite of their tithes and offerings is simply because God is not a politician. You will not bribe him. He sees the motif of men's heart. God will never empower any man who will be a liability. You can get your wealth from different sources. But the Bible says, labor not to be rich, for they will grow wings and fly away. Then it says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and added no sorrow. That is the one factor the world does not have. I mean, the world has and the church should not have. Sorrow. You see somebody get rich, a man who was nice to his wife, he just got a contract of 30 million. He tells her, honey, from today we are not staying in the same room. She's like, why? I said, look, leave me alone. We don't stay in the same room again. You buy a bed that has a locker in it, you put your key and lock it. As soon as you're going out and you see your child, you just, some of our parents are like that. They want to go and ease themselves, they will lock the room. Once they hear any sound, who is that? Who is that? What sorrow. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord. It make it rich. The day they make one million, they are just afraid of moving around. From the bank, you would draw 100,000. You think everybody around you is a thief. From the cashier who gave you the money to everybody, the God man. They want to, no, 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 no. Thank you. Just, just leave me alone. Ah, no. That is a mentality of ownership and not stewardship. Any wealth God gives, he defends. That's why we can, we can stand tall even through the so-called recession. We know that we are not governed by the economy of this system. We are governed, we are ambassadors. We represent an embassy, the embassy of heaven. And our economy is not tied to Naira and Kobo. Our economy is tied to the integrity of our king. And the Bible says he looked for one who was greater so that he would swear by. And since he didn't find anyone, he swore by himself that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. If you say God is not faithful, that's your business. There are many people who are saying he's faithful. If you are angry and say God you are wicked, that's your cup of tea consistently day and night there are people with voices more glorious than your own shouting holy 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 you better join the queue and join in the worship it doesn't do you any good to reject god's plan hallelujah say after me i am a steward of god's wealth now examine your life Look at how many of you have wasted and spent money as if it's your own. The way you use money is proof that you know whether you are a steward or an owner. The way you shout and quarrel people and behave over money. You suspect your roommate. You suspect your people are at your place of work. You suspect everybody because you think it is your own my power and my might has given me this that was the warning that was given to the people in the book of deuteronomy chapter 8 it says let it not be that when you have built houses and acquire lands you will say my power and my might has given me this but thou shall remember the one who gave you thou shall remember that's what many people do they forget so as Kingdom citizens, we're in the school of prosperity tonight. And as kingdom citizens, you must realize that you are a steward and not an owner. Say after me, I am a steward. I am a steward. And I will be accountable. Hallelujah. You must realize that you are a steward. That's all I'll say about that for now. We'll talk about some more in the business exclusive tomorrow. Now, I'll talk about very quickly. The laws of kingdom wealth. Hmm. Somebody's life is about to change. Believe me. Somebody's life is about to be altered very permanently. Lord, I pray that as I bring this word, let it come with power. It has changed the lives of many. Let it change somebody's life right now. If you've been sleeping, now is the time to wake up. I want to talk to you about the laws of money. One more time. Let me use this example. Watch this. 
Did it fall? Watch this. Did it fall? Is it bounded by location? Watch this. Did it fall? A law is a principle that has a predictable outcome when applied. A principle that has a predictable outcome. You can predict what will happen. As I throw this up, I expect it to come down. If it didn't come down, some of you will run out by now. As anointed as you think you are sitting. As if you see this barrel hang, except, uh, okay, well, we have a generation of people who understand the operation of the anointing. And so we will not have people run out. But some of you will still run out and watch from outside. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So a law is a principle that has a predictable outcome. When you see a student in 100 level, 200 level, you can predict that in the next 3-4 years, this guy can be an engineer. This guy can be this. A law is a principle that has a predictable outcome. And the wealth of the kingdom is governed by laws. Listen, listen. We are not talking about this kind that you come and give testimony. Praise the Lord. Uh, my uncle from UK called me yesterday and he sent me 30 pounds and people clap and you will never testify again for the rest of your life. That's just a hit. We are talking of consistent results. We are not talking of something that uh, you just happen like a contract. Then after five years, you just see us. Ah, how about that testimony? Let's forget this thing. Nah. A law is a principle that has a predictable outcome. That means when you keep doing it, the result is guaranteed. Hey. As long as you apply the laws, the result is guaranteed. Every morning when you wake up, the sun rises from the east and sets in the west. Hallelujah. Every time you are hungry, you don't start praying in tongues. What do you do? And you have a predictable outcome. When you eat, what happens? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very important. So we'll be examining eight laws. I have found out from personal experience and studying the life of wealthy people. Really wealthy people. I'm not talking of demonic people. Really wealthy kingdom driven people. Some of these laws that I'm going to be showing you have really caused many people to radically become millionaires. Some of these laws, you understand a man, a man called Sondia Delaja. How many of you know Sondia Delaja in Ukraine? The pastor of the largest church. Applying some of these principles that I'll be sharing with you. Within nine months, he became a millionaire in dollars. Nine months. And he couldn't believe it. Then he tried it on his members. And within two years, he produced 200 millionaires. I'm not talking of, I'm not talking of people who already had people from the scratch who had nothing. That's why I don't care what your financial status is tonight. If you will receive these laws, they are not just human psychological laws. Hallelujah. God placed them for us. Number one. The laws of kingdom wealth now. Number one, the law of giving. The law of giving. The law of giving. Can I tell you something? 90% of the church know only this law when it comes to money. Unfortunately, that's not the only law. It's only one of many. Hallelujah. The law of giving. Under the law of giving, we have tithing. We have your offering. We have your prophet's offering, first fruit. All of them come under only one law, the law of giving. Hmm. Hallelujah. That's why many people have given tight. Tight. And now these things are, these laws are very good. We'll be seeing how they relate to each other. You can give your tight. Give your tight. How many of you have paid tight, paid tight, spoke in tongues on it, Pay tight and it didn't bring a harvest. Be honest with me. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. If what you receive is what you call a harvest, it's a lie. You know what a harvest looks like. Hallelujah. Now, 
Don't get me wrong. These are your first connection to the economy of heaven is your tithe. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 says, Will a man rob God? And he says, Wherein have you robbed me? And he said, In your tithes and offerings. He says, You are cursed. Even this whole nation. And then verse 10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse so that there may be meat in my house. He says, and prove me now here with say the Lord, if I will not open the floodgates of heaven, the windows of heaven, and shower upon you a blessing that there may not be a room enough to contain. Many people stop there, but there's more. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and it shall not destroy the fruit of your, vine, your ground, neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. Then he said, you'll be blessed and you'll be a delightsome land. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. Hallelujah. And so the law of tithing, very important. We have people still arguing whether tithing is for the uh, old, old, uh, what the old Testament or New Testament. Change your mind. If you are serious about kingdom wealth, begin to pay your tithe today. Your tithe is a tenth portion of your increase. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of thine increase. Verse 10 says, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy fats to overflowing. Hallelujah. Your tithe is a tenth portion of your increase. One tenth. Practice it. Not just religiously, but practice it truly from your heart. Hallelujah. So tithing, very, very important. Number two, giving. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men, so your prosperity is in the hands of who? The Bible says shall men, not shall God. Shall men give unto you. Listen, if all of us become millionaires here, one million will not fall from heaven. Every one naira is already on circulation. That's why I believe, I really do not believe in creating wealth. I believe in wealth transfer. Because the earth is still as full as it ever was. What has been happening is a transfer of wealth through geographical locations as a result of the mastery of the laws that govern it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Many of you are surprised. So what are the eight others? Because all we've been taught in church is just, listen, we just say tithe, give offering. And people are innocently doing it. And the only ones who are benefiting is those collecting it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, there's nothing wrong. Listen, I'm not, I hope you understand that I'm not criticizing anybody. It's, it's, Many, listen, you must connect. These are kingdom principles. The law of giving. Your tithes. A tenth portion. The Bible tells us in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It says, he that soweth sparingly. Many people say the size of your seed does not matter. Go and read the Bible. He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Very important. The Bible says, for with the measure that you give unto men, Luke 6, 39, that's the same measure that it will be given unto you. Make up your mind to be a giver. For God so loved the world that he... So if you truly love, there must be giving. Hallelujah. Say after me, I am a tither in the name of Jesus. And I am a giver. Not just money, your time, your energy. But you see, according to the law of God, every tree produces seed after its kind. So when you give love, you get a harvest of love. When you give peace, you get a harvest of peace. When you give money, you will not get the harvest of kindness. You will get the harvest of money. Many of us can give anything aside from money. Then you'll never be rich. Never, never be rich. And let me tell you something for your information. If you think you want to work for everything you will earn, get ready to die young. 
Let's do a little analysis. I always do this when I'm having my meetings. Guys, all of you want to be responsible. You know parents now are not like before. You don't, if you cannot trust God and horn, if you are still knocking the gate, the father will say, so it's me you are playing with like this. Hallelujah. How much is one block? For those of you who see every skyscraper and claim it, how much is one block? How much is one bag of cement? If, from your job, how much is the salary they will give you per month? How many years will it take you? How many years will it take you to build a house and to build a structure? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The law of giving. Very, very important. Hallelujah. So this is critically important. The law of giving. We must engage the law of giving. Say after me, I am a giver. I am a tither. I reject greed from my life. Stingy people will never be rich. Let me tell you. If you are stingy and greedy, you are always, the Bible says, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. It said there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Many people have been taught that when you give, oh, all these men of God are just cornering your head. That's not true. That's not true. The law of giving. Number two, the law of vision. The law of vision. Come on. Say after me. The law of vision. He told Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, as far as your eyes can see, to you will I give us an inheritance. As far as your eyes can see. Told the prophet, son of man, what seest thou? And he said, an almond tree. And he said, you have seen correctly. The law of vision. Listen. If you ever want to walk in kingdom wealth and prosperity, you must see yourself in the light of God's word. It does, the Bible says, why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. It doesn't matter. What you're, let me tell you something. Many years from now, ask my brothers. I mean, many years before now, I kept speaking. I saw myself standing in prosperity. Right here in this community market, I could not afford a meal of 40 naira. Are you listening to me? Right here in this community market, I could not afford a meal of 40 naira. I would ask the woman to give me a meal of 30 naira and not put meat. Because if she puts meat, she will pay for it by herself. The water was free, so there was no need to buy water. God, you are faithful. <laughs> Hallelujah. The law of vision. I'm asking you tonight. What do you see concerning your financial destiny? Now, don't joke with these things we are saying. I told you a law is a principle that has a predictable outcome. In business and finances, they call it the law of imagination. They tell you picture, use your mental power, corner yourself. That's demonism. That's principles of witchcraft. How be it? The Bible says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, far above all we ask or think, comes from the Hebrew word, the Greek word yetzah. Imagination that is capable of becoming a reality. Genesis chapter 11, the Bible says God looked upon them and saw that that which they had imagined they will do. Your imagination comes to a point and a realm where it can become a reality. And when it becomes a reality in the spirit, then it will manifest in the physical. The law of vision. What do you see? Hallelujah. Very important. What do you see financially? What do you see? I see my generation happy and celebrating the finances. I see the church of God moving. I see myself walking in wealth and prosperity. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to see myself poor. I see my parents smiling and saying, Blessed be this son that I gave birth to. That's what I see. 
What do you see tonight? The law of vision. Number three, the law of confession. These are powerful laws. Don't joke with them. Every one of them is important. The law of confession. What the Bible calls the spirit of faith. The Bible says, we have been the same spirit of faith. Second Corinthians 4, let's look at it quickly. The Lord is changing men tonight. We are in the school of wealth and prosperity. The Lord is altering our minds for good. You will find out that prosperity is not luck. It's not a thing of chance. It's a definite operation of principles. Hallelujah. Verse 13. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believed and therefore have i spoken we also believe and we therefore speak the law of confession says that you speak it even in the world system let me tell you something the reason why the men of the world system have been rich is because they have stolen the principles of god's system they changed the names and did every kind of thing the law of confession Oftentimes you hear people say speak the word. It's not just to make you believe. It is operating the law of confession. What the Bible calls the spirit of faith. Genesis chapter 1 says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says now the earth was dark and void and formless. And the spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. Although the spirit of God was hovering around the face of the waters, there was no change. Verse 3 says, and God said, he didn't wish, he didn't dream. He said, let there be light. He didn't say, hey, yeah, darkness. He said, let there be light. And he saw, and he said, and he saw, and he said, and he saw. If you say, you will see. If you say it, you will see it. Not what the economy of nations is saying. I refuse to speak like men of the world. I refuse. I refuse it. I refuse it. I speak like a citizen of the kingdom. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I believe God's word. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. The law of confession. The Bible says, For by thy words you are justified, and by thy words you are ensnared. I will never speak words of poverty. I will not speak words of lack by the grace of the Son of God. The spirit of faith. In Ezekiel chapter 37, he took Ezekiel to a valley of dry bones. And he says, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel the prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. Speak forth. Speak to these dry bones. Although they are dry, although they look dead, the Bible records that the bones were very dry. Very dry was the extent of hopelessness. But the Spirit of God was showing him a principle, the law of confession. The word confession comes from the Hebrew word homologio. And it means repeat what you just had. Say what has been said. That's why the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord, although he already called them redeemed, he said, let them say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Let the healthy of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Oh, I am prosperous. Come on, speak in one minute. I am blessed. I am prosperous in the name of Jesus. I am not a liability to my parents. I'm not a liability to my generation. In spite of the economy, in spite of the recession, I choose to speak. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so <laughs> hallelujah the law of confession number four the law of value hmm. 
the law of value. Very, very important. Listen, money only comes to those who add value. Are you listening to me? Nobody has been given a Nobel Prize for taking from the world. You only get a prize for giving value. We have a bunch of lazy believers who do not do anything to invest in themselves. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Ali Kodangote gets up in the morning and he's studying, reading books, going for seminars. And we have lazy believers who are sitting down and say the wealth of the Gentiles will be converted to us. You think so? <laughs> Somebody wakes up in the morning, he's diligent, buying books, doing all the things that he will do to invest in himself. And we have in the church, people just think you just mumble tongues for five minutes and go and rest. And then everything just works for you. There's something called the law of value. Hallelujah. In the book of Esther chapter 2, the Bible tells us that the woman called Hadassah, Esther, was very pretty when Vashti was uh, banned out of the palace by the king, Ahasuerus. The Bible records that although Esther was beautiful, she was not yet fit to stand before the king. Hallelujah. And then the Bible makes us to understand that for one year, she went through a period of cleansing and training. What was she doing? Adding value to herself. Although she had the potential to become the queen, she would have never been queen until she kept adding value to herself. And then one time she met the opportunity and the Bible says she passed the king only once. Only once. Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. So settle down. When you get money, that's not the time to buy Timberland and parade the campus and make noise. Or just go ahead and go and buy a car, buy one Volvo or buy something and be disturbing people in the city. Add value. Money is what you get in exchange of value. If I have something you do not have, you will pay me for it. That's, how, that's what the rich do to the poor. So the poor work hard, work hard. While they are working hard, the rich people are adding value. When the poor get the money, they run to the rich and change it for the value. Hallelujah. When you take water from the tap, refine it, package it, you can sell bottled water that you can just get around because it went through a process. See, let me tell you something. The more you add value to yourself, the more the world cannot reject you. Make no mistakes about it. Money will only come to those who understand the law of value. Great men and those who are wealthy understand the place of value. Many believers have not been taught the place of value. We don't invest in ourselves. You see somebody opens a shop, a very dirty shop, not swept, not kept. You don't go and find out about those who have had that shop and find out how they excel. We just open something there and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus. Every blood-sucking demon, we surround it and then no customer is coming. And I say, oh God, value! Add value. It is a magnet that draws people. Listen, men who can offer something cannot be dejected. Never. Hallelujah. All of these men are competent because of the value they can add. Even in ministry, you see a man of God sit down, he doesn't study, he doesn't take out time, he doesn't pray, he doesn't do anything, he just wears suit and you go and you want to raise people and you want to gather people. Nonsense. That's rubbish. There's something called the law of value. Even in the world system, those who make a lot of money, even by diabolical means, understand the law of value. So you want to be a consistent millionaire. Learn the law of value. We come to school to add value. Correct? After a period of time, it's believed that you can add. If you go to look for a job in 100 levels, they will not give you. Why? Because you have not added value enough. Is that correct? And when you earn a degree, then you are qualified now to go and get the job. 
because value has been added if for any reason you move further to masters you move further to phd for instance you have added value to yourself now i'm not just speaking it in terms of education alone find the areas that god has blessed you invest in adding value let me tell you something. How many people, you see people in the music ministry, I keep saying this, they claim God has called them. They don't sit down, they don't invest in tapes, they don't invest in training themselves, they don't pray, they don't pay for workshops to train their voice and then they just stand somewhere and produce one album as they are in the studio, they are composing the second stanza and you want the whole world to buy it. That's nonsense. And then we have people like 50 Cent and the rest who have written songs that till for ages they, and then they come and sing it and everybody is flying the market and believers are saying it's not fair why is it not fair <laughs> develop yourself develop yourself develop your ability make yourself priceless in whatever area God has called you be the best the world cannot deny you hallelujah the great evangelist, what's his name? Billy Graham. All the presidents of America, from the time he started seeing the first one, they come to pay homage. They don't like, the, whether they like Christianity or not, he has so made himself an object of value that the world cannot deny him. Hallelujah. When you add value to yourself and add value to your community, they will pay you for it. I had Bishop Oedipo built a bridge around his community and did every kind of... Many people who want to open churches and plant churches, the people are hungry. When you add value to their life, it will bring them. The law of value. Say amen. amen. So invest. You don't see great men running up and down. You sit down and add value. Next. The law of savings and investment, what I call the law of multiplicity. Please listen. This is very important. Look up. The most careless set of financial people are Christians. Hallelujah. We are the most careless of all people. It's only in, in the church that you find financial carelessness and excesses. The only way money multiplies is by investment. Say after me. The only way money multiplies is by investment matthew chapter 25 the bible says when he gave one one talent i mean two talents he gave one five talents he gave the other one how many talents one the bible says they went and what invested it listen look up the first mistake we do as believers is that when money enters your hand you spend it the rich don't spend what enters their hand the rich spend the profit they make hallelujah that's what we do when money enters your hand the next thing you are thinking of what no the law of multiplicity you do not spend your capital you spend your profits the first thing to do with money is to save it not spend it you see around many believers we work so hard as the money enters our hand what are we doing you see a man who blow his salary in one day that's a poor man. No matter how much he makes. You see a man who cannot afford anything in his family, but you go and spend his money. The moment 40,000 comes his salary, he's using 19,000 to buy tire of his car. That's nonsense. I see a mystery. See, listen. Warren Buffett started a man called Warren Buffett. He's not born again. I just want to use his life to say something. He's the second world's richest man. Hallelujah. The second world's richest man. The Bible, not the Bible now, praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Now, he started investing at age eight. Hallelujah. And he invested in stocks at age eight. And um, many years later, he became so rich. And when they asked him, what's your greatest mistake in life? He said, my greatest mistake is that I didn't start investing early. How old are you? You want to marry next year. How old are you? Many of us have been cheated to think we are so small. 
and the hard-earned money that is gotten to give, we start spending it. You are eating everything. Suya, into me, just eating your future. And you finish and say, God, let another money come. See, that's how the poor think. They are always spending conscious. The rich save, invest, then spend. It's a law. It will not change. It's called the law of multiplicity. Somebody makes one million. And he's behaving as if he has hundred million. Let me tell you something about money and wealth. When, when you make some money, all right, and then you change your status, even when that money finishes, you are compelled by your environment to maintain that status. And you will be on deficit all the time. Because you got a scholarship of 75,000 naira, you go and start eating in Shagalinku. You forget that the money finishes. When the money has finished now, your friends are, and, and everyone says, so oh, how far now? You, you can't go to Zinc House, the good old Zinc House. You can't go back there again. What happens? You start borrowing. What happens? You start doing all kinds of things. On useless expenditures. Never borrow money to spend. Write it. It's a fundamental law. Do not borrow money to spend. It is amazing how people borrow money to spend. You are killing yourself. If you find yourself in a hole, the first way out is to stop digging. Never borrow money to spend. Our parents do it every time. Give me 20,000. And what do they do with it? Buy swear, uh, uh, 5,000 and bring it for the house. Buy shoe. That's nonsense. Those things are liabilities. A liability is anything that depreciates in value. That's the difference between the rich and the poor. The poor always spend. So the sister gives a testimony. Praise the Lord. I got a hundred thousand uh, naira from my uncle. He came from UK. Everybody says, wow. Next Sunday, what's she doing? Her Gucci rush. Her flamboyant excesses on her hair and everything and after two weeks right now she goes back to the good old reward soaks it inside hot water and carries it to put it back because the money has finished you think i don't know i know <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah listen listen if you are really serious about sustainable wealth, I'd like you to know that there is a fundamental law that almost, I'm sure almost 80 to 90% of us in this place have broken this law. We always spend. Some of you have some small change in your account now. You are thinking of spending. Flamboyant, unreasonable spending. You either invest, see, the rich invest. The man you called Aliko Dangote, when his uncle and Tata gave him 250,000 naira, he used it judiciously and built the empire he has today. Although he's an unbeliever, he operated that law and it worked for him. How many times has 100,000 entered your hand? How many times has 20,000 entered your hand? How many times has 10,000 entered your hand? What did you do with it? You bought a phone that was stolen the next day. The rich never concentrate on liabilities. When they get money, they think on, if they will ever buy anything, they think on assets. Assets, is it, uh, there are those um, um, that can increase in value. Your tongues will not change this rule. I assure you. Are you seeing why some people will never be rich? They are breaking this law, especially government workers. They get money. Because they have collected debt so much. As, soon, as you are collecting salary, your debtor is waiting for you by the gate of the uh, local government or wherever. You are coming and say, give my money now. And so, although, have you not been surprised? Some of our parents are working so hard, but there's nothing to show for it. It's not like they are sleeping around or doing some ungodly thing. Even they, they are shocked. They thought the solution was in promotion. Then they got promoted. The situation did not change. Hallelujah. Because according to Parkinson's law, your needs will rise to meet your level of income. It's an economic principle. Hallelujah. Are, are you getting blessed tonight? These are unbeatable 
of kingdom wealth and prosperity. Let's hurry up. The law of what? Multiplicity. That's the law. So, when money enters your hand, what is the first thing? Save. Second, invest. If you don't have the discipline to save, open a bank account. That's why banks are there. See, our parents used to operate a traditional wisdom that we have neglected. How many of you know what they call Asusu? It looks old, but it has worked for many of our parents. They create the whole sufficient only to receive money. It doesn't give. And so they keep putting it there. Little by little. Before you know it, they've been patient for five years. The day they break that asus when you see their life, you will be surprised at where they, get, they got that money from. Let me tell you something. One day the Lord asked me to do something. I went to the bank and I asked them to give me a total of all the amount that had entered my bank. I, I almost screamed. I said, what? Where did all this money go to? Puff, puff, chingong, uh, uh, um, um, bonds, everything. A man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls. Discipline is not an indication of poverty. It's a strategizing for a glorious future. You are rich. When you are really rich, you will find out that there is pressure, all kinds of pressure. But you must get to a point in your life where you draw a line and say, Lord, I am contented. The reason why they are divorced, the, the case of divorce is rampant is because men do not understand the language of contentment. Those who are rich, not by God's principles. If they have one billion, have you not seen billionaires still stealing from the national treasury? What is driving them to steal? I mean, a man who has a house that is made of gold is still stealing 100,000. When you, when you carry out a transaction, you must still bribe that man with 1,000 and you bring his hand and collect. Shame on him. He's not a rich man. He only has money. Hallelujah. So you must get to a point in your life when you are contented. The Bible says godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. Say after me, I live a contented life. Now a contented life does not mean a poor life. You can't be contented with poverty. But that as the Lord takes you high, you get to it. That's why I gave you your definition. I gave you definition of money. The day I'm able to grow financially such that I meet my financial targets, I am contented. No more. There is a level of modesty. Hear me, friends. There is a level of modesty that will give you room to relate with this realm and still be relevant in the kingdom. Outside that boundary of modesty, you become totally lawless and useless to God's government. There is a level of financial modesty. Are you following? There is a level of financial modesty that you must keep. I know we've taken quite some time, but let's, let's just listen. I'll, I'll soon be rounding up. There is a level of financial modesty. How much money do you... The Lord asked me this question um, last year or so. No, two years ago. And he said, how much money do you need? That's what God asked me. I know many of us say, hey, just give me room. Let me square up my shoulder. Lord, I need five... Z that's, the, that's a poor man talking. And that's how I spoke. And then I had to calm down and think. And truly I realized that I didn't know how much money I wanted. And the Lord said, let me tell you how much money you need. Money that is sufficient enough to live a comfortable life, to be a blessing to the world and to the church. Are you following me? And to advance my kingdom. Whatever numerical value that amounts to, that's how much money you need. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, contented people don't chase after money foolishly you just chase after money there are some of us that even if you are dying and they wave money you come back to life i say eh, where is it see that's 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 what the bible calls lost you can give yourself for money you can give anything for money that level of desperation is antichrist you can, the bible says you cannot serve god and mammon mammon is not money Mammon is a spiritual demonic activity. That's what causes men to lost after money. Your 1,000 error gets missing and it's as if the whole world will fall on your head because 1,000 went with you. You are cursing everybody. You are binding everybody. You are rebuking everybody. You are going to native doctor. That's nonsense. 
That's a poor man. The rich know that the money is not lost. It only changed direction and they will navigate it back. See, you can't rob from a rich man. The earth is still full. I told you that about 20% of the wealthy people on this earth control about 90 to 95% of the wealth. Can you imagine? And the, the remaining 80%, they, they left 5% for, and, and people are rat race everywhere. And let me tell you something. If you want to live only by your salary, you are going to be poor. Your, your boss will never empower you to make you rich. He's paying you to serve him. I didn't say don't work. I'm only telling you the reality. Ask our parents. No boss will empower you above his financial status. That's why your salary is defined. Many of us that laugh and say I'm earning 200,000 per month. When you begin to face the realities of life, you will know that it's not about the money. 200%, is it net or gross? Remove tight, how much is left? 180. You are in a relationship. It's expensive to maintain a relationship. Remove the one there too. How much is left? You have parents and you are committed to your family members. Hallelujah. You have friends that have been there for you from the days you are taking Gary. Calculate everything. You need to save. You need to give. You are a Christian and you give. Church commitment, building project. By the time you finish, and listen, let me tell you something. By the time you've given 100,000 out of it, your mother will still be looking at you as a 200,000 naira worth person. So you cannot be earning 200,000 and give your mother 5,000. Are you following me? You will be under needless pressure. Everybody's just saying, car, you are earning 200,000. But you know that your needs always arise to meet your level of income. And when you calculate it, even when you are earning 1 million, you find out that this thing is not working. I'm sorry to say, but let me tell you something. The financial system of a believer was not supposed to be a monthly payment. The Bible says he daily loads us with benefits. So that you have collected debts before the end of the month. Arias. And if for any reason the government does not pay that month, there's trouble. But we'll be delivered from this because of this revelation. Hallelujah. The last law is another law that we do not pay attention to. It's called the law of diligence and persistence. The law of what? Diligence and persistence. The Bible says, see yet thou a man diligent in his business. We only use this scripture for academics. It was not written for a student. See yet thou a man diligent in his business. It, 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 business. He said he shall not stand before what? Mean men, average people. His diligence will take him to the top. We are not persistent. When you try and it looks like you fail, you just sit and say, God, you said this, except you are not God. See, the rich are those that when one door closes, they force another one to open. They don't have time to meditate on their failures. At a point, Warren Buffett lost 200 million US dollars. And while people wanted to, to, to interview him, he just looked at them and said he doesn't have anything to tell them. After a while, he made that money and got angry and made it again and made it again and made it again. It's only in the church that when somebody fails one, people say the word of God is not working for you. You will understand that failure is a language in the school of success. Separate between failure as a person and failure as an event. The Bible says, though the righteous man falls seven times, he will rise again. But then when you conclude and you give up, that is it. There are many people that are not persistent. Yeah, that you failed once or that uh, some investment or business didn't work for you or work for your parents is not enough reason to just pack up and start frowning at the whole world. Sit down, re-strategize and go back again. Master, we have toiled all night. We have done this thing. But the master told them, I don't want you to do something different. Do the same thing. The law of persistence. Wealth and money will only come to people who are diligent and persistent. Tonight, God is speaking to somebody, stand up and rise again. Rise again. You may have done something. God told you to write a book and you wrote a book and it, it didn't even get published. Probably something happened and you really lost. Calm down. Restrategize. Go back again. 
there is wealth there because the voice of God, the Bible says, it shall be as the sun, as the rain that comes and it does not go void, but it waters, it produces crops from the ground. It says, so shall it be my word that has proceeded out of my mouth. It shall never return to me void. Eight laws that I found out in my journey to financial success. Eight unbeatable, irrefutable laws that when you operate them, the law of giving, the law of um, vision, the law of confession, these three laws are the spiritual laws that govern investment. The main five are the natural laws that govern investment. A combination of this, because according to the principle of Genesis 1.26, it will take God and man in unison to make things happen here on earth. And so it will take a combination of these spiritual laws and these natural laws that God has put. Are you seeing the reason why tithing enough will not make you a kingdom millionaire? Listen to me, this is very important. As good as it is, many of us have given and given and given and then they spend every money. God, when you cry unto God, he does not give you a harvest. He gives you a seed and the wisdom to translate that seed into a harvest. How many times have we eaten the seeds that God has brought for us? so many times please do not miss tomorrow's business meeting i'd like you to come and come early because we are going to be sharing some very practical things we cannot say them now because of the kind of environment right and and, and because of um uh, is, is night but we are going to be talking let's review the laws very quickly as we round up number one the law of giving number two the law of vision number three the law of confession number four the law of value Number five, the law of multiplication, multiplicity, savings and investment. That is probably one of the major laws. Because I told you, the only way money grows is by what? Are you listening to me? Money can come by favor. Money can come by all of these things. Money does not grow by all of these things. Money grows by savings and investment. This is an irrefutable law. Every truly rich man knows that money can only be multiplied when you invest it. Matthew 25 tells us that when he committed it to them because you are a steward, the rich do not spend their capital. The rich, no matter how small, the rich do not spend their capital. You may be saying, all I have is one 1,000 naira. The Bible says that line upon line, precepts upon precepts a little here if many of you started saving from 2008 by now you would have had capital enough to invest in something many of you from january till now just this week how much have you spent unnecessarily the rich are not spending conscious they are savings and investment conscious so rise up generation of rich people because it is your savings and investment that will multiply you. Let me tell you something. The Bible says time and chance happeneth to them all. Don't give me any excuse whether you do not have a steady state of income. God has a way of turning the tables. So I told you favor is when preparation meets opportunity. When you are not prepared, you will miss it. Every one of us is entitled to the justice of God. And God is fair enough. We are very, very indisciplined in the church. We are not disciplined enough to save and then to invest. You can't be like you know, this is income. There are many of us that spend, you only buy designer's clothes. And you do not get steady money. And you say, God forbid, I cannot wear. Listen, let me teach you something, the difference between faith and foolishness. Alright? Foolishness is when you eat your future now in the name of faith. If you go and, and go to these clothes they sell and you are earning 5,000 5, and you use 2,000 to buy some nice wares and iron them, nobody said you will continue like that for the rest of your life. You are, many of us are under the challenge of trying to give a reputation that we do not have, that you cannot defend. If you will keep saving that amount and diligently keep investing, the Lord has a way of honoring the obedience of everyone. The moment you begin to obey these laws, God himself, who oversees these laws he created, will begin to create opportunities for you here and there. There is no rich man, only very few, 
The world's richest people have studied their lives, both in the kingdom and outside the kingdom. None of them was giving capital. Listen, the first capital you need is the Holy Spirit. The second capital you need is your mind. Not money. Many of us think it's money. And we're just praying, Lord, give me 5,000. Give me 50,000. Give me 100,000. And you are angry at your uncle. If only he had given me 200,000, my life would have changed. You think so. If you had gotten that money, it wouldn't have changed. I assure you, believe me. What you need tonight is not capital. For when you operate these values, tomorrow we'll be sharing certain principles. We'll be having resource persons speak to us about raising raising capital is not the issue when you invest in yourself money cometh so the next time you are shouting make sure these laws are operational in your life then you can truly stand and say money cometh hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you